I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and a couple weeks ago, I showed off the new Honda EU3200. The Honda EU line of generators are very quiet, and the way they can do that is the power is actually produced by an inverter and not straight off of the engine. Now, a lot of you thought that generator was too expensive, so today I'm going to show you how you can produce that much power for one-tenth the cost. Those Honda EU generators use an inverter to create the AC power, and that's what we're going to use today. So in this box, I have a 3500 watt inverter, which is actually more powerful than the EU3200. And we're going to use this, which costs one tenth the price of that generator to produce our AC power. So let's take a look inside. Comes with a little remote that we can use if we wanted to. That just uses a little telephone line for communication. Came with a little strip of battery cables, a whole bunch of fuses. That's a, I don't know if it takes a bunch of fuses or if they think you're going to be blowing them off. And so that's a little concerning. Right away, the build quality of the enclosure seems pretty nice. This is from Bevor. And this is a pure sine wave inverter. So this does not create a square wave. With producing a sine wave, you're able to run things with electric motors. You're not going to burn them out. Your microwave and other devices, basically the ones that don't use the little AC brick, they're all gonna thank you if you use a sine wave inverter because this produces the same power as like you would find in your household. On the front, we have a little screen. We have four outlets, an on and off switch, the connection for the remote. And here's where we can hardwire it to a camper or to outlets. So if we wanted to install this into a camper or an RV, we can just connect our shore power up to these outlets right here. The advantage of using this box here is you can use all 30 amps of power, whereas you're only limited to 15 amps on each of these outlets. On the back side, we have a giant fan and the connections for our battery power. This particular unit runs on 12 volts, so you can only run this on a vehicle that has 12 volts. Let's take a look at running this in the most simple manner, which would be just connecting the battery cables that came with it to a 12 volt battery. I have the inverter hooked up in its most simple configuration now. The inverter is just wired straight to a 12 volt deep cycle battery. So if we turn the inverter on, we have a little screen on. We can see our light turned on because it's supplying power out to it. The light is taking 13 watts of power. And this configuration works just fine if you want to take this out in the woods, use it in your cabin. If you just need to power things for a short amount of time, possibly in an emergency or something like that. But there's nothing to recharge this battery. So this isn't a good replacement for an actual generator. But I think we can do better. The next thing that I think would make this more useful is actually putting a set of clamps on it. So if you have an old set of jumper cables lying around, just lob the clamps off of one end so that you have one set of clamps and then a length of cable, which you can put some eyelets on and connect it up to the inverter. Now we can easily connect this up to any battery. And it'll turn on and power our devices. The good thing about this is now we have the ability to connect this to any car, any boat, anything that has a power source. And as long as you have that car running, it should be able to power the inverter for as long as you want it to. So in an emergency, you could use your normal car to power the devices in your house. As a super temporary use, using clamps like this is an okay decision, but I think we can still do better than this. What I've done now is the wires come out of the back of the inverter and they go to a big heavy duty connector like this. The other end of these jumper cables has another one of these connectors. So now when I connect the two together, the power goes from the battery to the inverter, turning the light on. And the great thing about having this attached to the inverter is that now you can use your inverter with many different configurations and many different vehicles. So if I wanted to use the inverter, just like I've shown right now, this is the configuration I would use 
with the jumper cables connected directly to the battery. Again, this is great for an emergency and more of a temporary solution. However, if you want to use your inverter more often and use it more like a generator, you should think about permanently installing one of these connectors to your vehicle. So here's another one of these, has the eyelets on it again, which you can mount to your battery, and then just mount these, this connector in a place that's easy to get to. My tow truck has one of these plugs on it, and it's so that you can get your jumper cables out, connect them up to the truck, and jump start other cars. I've also had a lot of race cars that use these connections so that you can connect the race car to another car to easily jump start it uh, or to charge the battery. So having one of these connections built into your vehicle, especially if you are going off-road or it's something that you use in emergencies, is a good thing to have on your vehicle. I could install one of these cables on one of my Land Rovers, and then if I want portable power, out in the wilderness, all I have to do is plug in the inverter, leave the Land Rover running, and I have a cheap mobile generator. Now let's hook this up to a vehicle and see how well it works. This is my Ford F550. This is the perfect truck to use this with because it has two batteries, has a pretty big alternator, and if your alternator is really small, you won't be able to use the inverter at its full capacity for very long because the alternator won't be able to keep the batteries charged fast enough. But if your alternator is big enough, you can run the inverter at full output for as long as you want, just like you would with a regular generator. Down here is our outlet. It has a little dust cover on it. And then, of course, we could connect our jumper cables if we needed to jumpstart another vehicle or if the truck itself needed jump started. But in this case, we'll just connect up our inverter. Now the inverter is on and building power. Let's plug in another device that takes quite a bit more power. We'll plug in this fan, turn it on to high. Now we can see with the fan running, that is using 170 watts. Still just a small fraction of what we can power with this inverter. I'm going to plug in a second fan as well, and this one has a big heater on it. So we should really be able to draw pretty good current with this one. Turn on the other fan now. Turn it on to high. Okay, we're using 1200 and now 1600 watts of power. It is starting to beep because we are drawing the batteries down. So I'll start the engine now. I have the engine running now. We're back up to 13.6 volts. So I'll turn on the other fan again. Yeah, it looks like 1600 watts is more than my alternator can keep up with. If I turn it off, we're back at 166 watts. My voltage is coming back up again. What I just demonstrated is this inverter requires a lot of power. If you were to power this, at full capacity non-stop you would need an alternator on your vehicle of at least 300 amps 300 or greater amp alternators are available from summit racing you can even go up to 400 amps if you get one of their dual alternator kits but when you're using something like this you usually are using only a fraction of its capacity and in an emergency something like this might be really nice to have devices that have electric motors in them usually require a lot of current just to start up, but then don't use as much once they're actually running. So having a larger inverter than you need, like this one, will let you start those devices that then require less electricity once they're running. One of the things I really like about this particular inverter is it is big, but it's actually pretty light. I've had inverters that produce half this power that actually weighed more than this unit does. So I see myself carrying this inverter along on off-roading trips, 
I can give it to anybody that can connect to their vehicle if they need power to run something or to charge something. I will put a link to the inverter in the description below, and I'll also put a link to the cables that I used. The particular ones I had, I got from Napa, but I'll try to find some equivalent ones that you can order on the internet, and I'll post those in the description below as well. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.